In this tutorial, we are going to use gouache like watercolor to paint this version of the ocean that's kind of choppy and wavy with some foam sitting on the, on the surface. So grab your materials and let's get started. First, I'm going to lay down a wash of clean water on my paper. You'll notice that I accidentally splattered a little drop of um, a little drop of water with some paint in it in the middle, but that's okay because we're just going to paint right on top of it. When you have the clean water down, pick up some of the paint and use the wet on wet technique to blend it together. We are going to try to use the wet of the paper, the white of the paper, and the transparency of the paint to create this kind of like shimmery effect on the surface of the paper using color values. Because of the transparency of this kind of paint and using the wet on wet technique, if we leave some spaces a little more light, so we use a little more water, and then some space is a little darker, so we use a little more paint, then we can create this kind of shifting light effect that often happens with water because of you know the depths of the light that's reflected in the water, and so that's really what we're going for here. I'm intentionally leaving behind white spaces or lighter spaces and then adding darker colors all throughout. Although note that I don't have like, I'm kind of following this reference photo in the bottom, in the bottom right hand corner, but I, I'm also not being too careful about perfection. And what I've laid down several different shades of blue and now I'm taking some white, some white gouache and adding to the white space and making the water look a little bit more chalky, look a little bit more um, diluted with the white by just adding a bunch of that white paint right on top. And now I, I let that dry. So that is the first layer of this kind of choppy ocean. Now that I have that blended layer with different color values, different like darknesses and lightness of the blue, I'm going to do a wet on dry layer with some white gouache. And this part, adding the foam, I think can be some of the most intimidating because you think, how can I possibly get this detailed enough to look realistic? And to that I say, don't worry so much about the details. Just kind of notice general shapes and then blob away. Just blob down your paintbrush. I'm using a flat brush uh, to start with. And I'm starting with the bigger portions of the foam and then adding in smaller detailed lines later. So right now we're just focusing on creating these kind of this choppy sea foam that's right on that sits right on top of the ocean. I continually throughout this tutorial had to grab more white paint because I just I kept running out because I'm using this gouache straight out of the tube instead of diluting it with water so it doesn't go quite as far but the point of doing that is so I can get that really choppy textured um, opaque look to mimic the look of the foam so this this tutorial is fun because we're kind of using gouache two ways we're using gouache like watercolor when we did the wet on wet technique for the first layer and we're using gouache kind of like you would acrylic. So we're using it just straight dry on the paper and trying to create textures with the with the white gouache to mimic the look of this like roiling ocean with all of this sea foam and these waves just crashing into each other. So after I have the main parts of the foam laid down, this is when I take a look at the reference photo and try to point out some specific details and see if I can mimic just a few of them. Again, I'm not going for perfection. It's okay with me if I don't get it exactly right. But I do want to try to add in a few of those very thin lines to see if that will help to make this look just a little more realistic. So I'm taking a very uh, a small round brush. This is my round brush either it's a size zero, I believe, and uh, using very thin lines, I'm just creating choppy little circles almost, choppy little wave-like motions 
uh, in similar places. I'm kind of going in a, in a zigzag motion, but the most important thing is I'm not using straight lines. So it doesn't really matter what shape you put your little random lines in. You just should not be using straight lines because the ocean is constantly moving. And so that's the effect that we are trying to make by adding these tiny little details. And then I have the reference photo down there so that we can try to mimic some of them. Some of the lines that I created, they look almost like ch um, choppy little circles or hexagons or, you know, just like loose organic kind of shapes that don't really have a specific shape to them but it's definitely in like a connected kind of circle kind of way. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's the only way that I know how to describe it. And I'm just kind of trying to mimic those shapes that I can see, those kind of circle shapes with my paintbrush, with my paint, so that I can get the look of, you know, the water in the ocean moving in all these different directions and crashing into each other in all of these different directions. So I'm just kind of going for it and not really paying much attention to if I'm getting it exactly right. And actually a funny story about when I was painting this, I thought to myself, this is not going well. I'm definitely not going to share this on YouTube. I just don't think that this quite looks exactly right. And I'm telling you this story uh, as you're watching me paint a little bit more details because I probably spent about 10 or 15 minutes going back and forth and adding random lines here or there, deciding if I wanted to stop or not stop, and then I ultimately at the end decided I wasn't going to share. And then I shared this in my stories a few weeks ago on Instagram and Immediately, people were like, oh, I love that picture of the ocean. Are you going to have that one available for sale? <laughs> and I had several people ask me that. And so, honestly, it just kind of goes to show that you never really know. Sometimes when you're in it, when you're trying something new and trying to, you know, experiment and explore and piece together something that you haven't really done before or that you know you're not going to be perfect at, it feels like it feels futile it feels like what's the point but there is a point and even if it doesn't look perfect it still you know is a something that you did and so you should be proud of any kind anytime you do any kind of experiment okay so i've put down mostly all of the small details that i wanted and now i'm taking a, a bigger like size six brush and adding some lighter blue, so mixing some blue with the white and adding in some of that complexity. So instead of just having the foam be stark white, one way to make the foam look a little more realistic is to add more color value on top of the foam. And so I'm adding a little bit of blues in there. And the great thing about using gouache is that you can reactivate it. So even if it's dry on the paper, you can use a wet paintbrush and just kind of uh, rework it a little bit and try to get that wet on wet kind of blurry look, even though this is a wet on dry layer. So that's one of the biggest differences between gouache and watercolor is gouache can be reworked on the paper and it's a, it's a really cool technique. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just using my paintbrush to kind of soften some of the edges, soften some of the lines of the foam in an effort to um, A, not have such stark lines, but also B, to create differences in lightness and darkness, um, meaning differences in value, so that the foam has a little bit more depth to it. It's not just one layer of water underneath and one layer of foam. It's more like you're looking down and you can't tell which layer is supposed to go on top and which layer is supposed to go on bottom because of the complexity of the light shifting through the layer. So obviously I'm not a perfect person and I can't like perfectly mimic that as if it were a photo, but reworking the gouache with a little bit of water is my attempt to do that. So on the edges where it's already dry, I still want to keep the main shape of most of these blobs, of most of these waves, so I'm not like completely washing over the texture that I made, 
but I'm just slightly uh, reworking it a little bit. And then I went back in with my small detail brush to add in a few more lines. Painting this kind of painting, especially painting the ocean, is often a dance between when do I add more details and when do I stop and when is anything going to be good enough and so that's kind of what we're looking at here after I spent some time reworking and uh, blending in some of the gouache with the ocean layer below I wanted to go back and create a few more of those ripples a few more lines of that foam that you would be able to see that you can still see in the reference photo for example so that's what I'm doing here and I'm just going back and forth and back and forth until I feel like I'm hitting a good stopping point. And there we go. So I did the back and forth thing for a bit, added a few more details, but at some point I decided to stop and then I was done. So uh, here's the tape peel. I always love a good tape peel. And the thing about this piece is when I took off the tape, it did look a little bit more like the ocean. And so I was pretty proud of it. But then, you know, I always second guess myself <laughs> and uh, that's just, what happens when you're an artist with, you know, imposter syndrome. So then I signed it and that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.